Well, I want to talk to ev about everyone's most wanted PC video game of 2016. Girl. Oh, Lord. Let's start with Steve. Okay. Our guest. What is what in this year aside from Tacoma? What what stands out to you as like, man, that is like that's the thing I've got to play before anything else. Is Dishonored two this year? I think it is. Uh, Dis allegedly, Dishonored pending delays. Yes. If so. Dishonored two factually comes out, not just allegedly, I think it'll be that. Um, Deus Ex: Mankind Divided. Um, that's confirmed to be like what Q two or, or something. Or yeah, they delayed yeah. it out of February to yeah. I think August. Um, so that's a hundred percent up there. I really liked um, Human Revolution. I thought they did a really good job of modernizing. Deus Ex, um, especially, especially once they fix the bosses. Uh, yes, well, and especially just because I don't think they had any, hardly any, like original team members that had worked on the first two games. Like that's a big, that's a big ticket to <laughs> to have to fill out. Like, oh yeah, we'll make a new Deus Ex game. I no guess problem. we'll just figure no it out. Yeah, totally gonna be easy. So I'm 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 psyched to see what they do with Mankind Divided, um, and I'm really looking forward to Firewatch by my friends at Campo Santo because they've been working hard on that game. It's beautiful. It's a walking simulator. I yep. love <laughs> to simulate walking. I, it's one of my favorite um, things to simulate. Inside of a computer or video game console. So. It's like the first fat guy walking simulator. <laughs> That's how I love that Vandeman is so excited about the fact that his character is a fat guy. Well, and, and one of the few like non Lara Croft video game protagonists to be wearing shorts. <laughs> He's a chubby guy in shorts. That's who you play as. That's so get no, used to it. It's, it's that and UPS driver simulator. That are like <laughs> but pushing you can, that. You can do that in like GTA San Andreas. That's true. That's but, but that's good. your choice. Those aren't enforced yeah, shorts. <laughs> Those are not regulation for your job yep. shorts. Man, I'm surprised that there is not delivery truck driver. Euro delivery truck yeah. driver <laughs> on PC. I mean, I maybe there is. Yeah, I, There's you know, a lot Amazon's got to be working on that game. Yeah, and and the the twist is, it turns out it's not a game. Yeah. You're actually delivering packages <laughs> for Amazon. It's the Ender's Game twist. <laughs> I th I can't like how like I would have so much so much respect for Amazon Game Studios if they actually were like, you know what people go crazy for on Steam bus simulator truck simulator train simulator we're gonna do amazon delivery simulator yep. you drive a truck until you get good enough then you get to drive a drone <laughs> and drop packages <laughs> on people's roofs uh and they actually shipped that holy yeah. crap gotta, well they, they gotta, gotta ship something with, someday i would yeah. go wild if that was what they just gotta team up with bohemia interactive and work on that yeah just there get, we go get the Make get it super realistic yeah, yeah, get get the the uh, you know take on Mars engine and yep. go nuts. <laughs> Make it completely unintuitive in every yeah. way. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm super looking forward to Firewatch too. That they they brought that game by a couple times. We did uh, a couple weeks back an IGN first video on it, and just every time I see that game, I'm and like IGN.com blown away. Yeah, like the all these <laughs> art is amazing, and Sean's writing is great, and the like just the UI improvements they've made over the last six months, or even like just like ah, just everything is so good. I like, re I've really hardly played any of it. I've played like their like expo builds, but sure. I haven't like so I'm I'm gonna be playing it fresh yeah. when it comes it. out. Yeah, just I've, watched. I've seen. Yeah, I've, I've just watched as well, and I, like you from, just fire one. from what I've seen so far. Uh, from what I've seen so far, Sorry. like I, I just like that. I still don't know what it's really about, yeah. but it's still, it's still kind of. Enticing. We were talking about that over lunch. What like, is so Firewatch? Games. Yeah, what is Firewatch? We were talking about it over lunch. That so few games and movies actually have mystery when yep. you go into them. Like you go into them knowing basically everything. Thanks and it was, trailers. Yeah, it was so exciting to go into the Force Awakens and the first sentence of the crawl. I'm like, I didn't know that. That's mm. awesome. And I'm going into this not knowing what the mystery is. I know there is a mystery, but it's not like, and the mystery is somebody's gone missing in the woods and you've got to <laughs> find them. Like, I just don't know what it is. I have no idea. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we tried to do that with Gone Home. I mean, there's only so much you can do after the game's out there. Sure. But I mean, I think that that's kind of the ideal is to say, like, there's a house. You get to it. You don't know where everybody is. What happened here? Play the game and but find out. And you're like, oh, it sounds like a spooky. I should <laughs> yeah. find out what happens. You know, because, like, we didn't, we never wanted to say, like, Spoilers. Ooh, like, I was going to say. Your sister's you missing. Go find her. You know, like, you find that out in pretty much the first five minutes sure. of the game. But like you said, the opening crawl, being where you find out what the premise is, is pretty, pretty cool good. compared to knowing it before you even buy a ticket. And so, so. few games instill the respect in the player like you guys did to not want to spoil it for people. Like, people have discussions about it, but everyone's really guarded. Like, you will play Gone Home, right? No? We'll wait. We'll have this <laughs> conversation later. I guess with Firewatch, we did we did see the opening for it, but I guess that's not out there yet. Correct. We can't uh, talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm certainly not going to. No, because it's, it's really the, good. It's it the part add, where Henry puts on his shorts. Yeah. It's fucked up. It, does, <laughs> it, adds, it added some interesting context to what <laughs> James to what really out. went to work on those animations. Yeah, yeah man. 
Dan, what about you? Uh, well, duh. XCOM 2. XCOM 2. I, I, I can't get through a podcast without talking about XCOM. No, of course. So it's I, yeah. me and uh, I, I do this with Far Cry 2 on Unlocked. Yeah. Just uh, why did, Speaking wait, of, are you saying we went through an entire... I know, and I didn't have the chance. Do you guys want to talk about Far Cry 2? That is a good <laughs> PC game. You guys want game. to talk about a PC game that's better than the console version. Yeah. yeah. Far Cry 2 is like unplayable on consoles to me. And you want to know it. why? It doesn't have a quick save. Like, you quick save? Oh, yeah. What? Dude, I'm not going to lose 40 minutes of progress between safe houses. You're doing it wrong. Sorry, man. Like, that that's the cutoff for me. I can't lose progress of that, of that like, volume and just keep playing. I do it on replays playing. now that I'm like, okay, I did it. I played through it all. I didn't do quick saves. The thing is, there's there's so much. It's such a long game, even if you never lose progress, <laughs> yeah. that, that I'm fine. It's because you got to walk everywhere. <laughs> Yeah. Or, no. or or drive your Jeep until it runs until into it a gazelle down. and breaks. <laughs> and and yet, yet you're not uh, super psyched about Far Cry Primal this year. Huh? I, I'm actually interested in Far Cry Primal. Here's the thing. They figured out a loophole. They figured out how to make a Far Cry with no guns. Yep. <laughs> it's because they've got spears instead. That's pretty good. I do like that there's no cars. There's no, like, you can ride an elephant. That's about it. Ride a rhinoceros, probably. I hope so. I don't know. I want to tame a rhino. No, I'm, I'm interested in Far Cry Primal. I mean, I, th I think it's pretty bold for them to be like, it's not Far Cry medieval. It's not Far Cry Victorian. It's not Far Cry ancient China. It's Far Cry cavemen. Deal with it. <laughs> like, that's good. <laughs> Um, they don't want to step on Assassin's Creed's uh, feet. Fair enough, yeah. Yeah, AC's probably not going to go back to caveman times, so <laughs> somebody's got to. I mean... They went back to like weird space alien times. They went out of times eventually. They're going to... They're gonna, yeah. yeah, exactly. They're, they're going to keep making Assassin's yeah. Creed's until there's nothing but cavemen left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Which, we, whatever that means, that sounds like what I meant was like <laughs> there's a nuclear... And then bomb we're and we're like bomb back to the back to the Stone Age, yeah. which maybe that's also probably true of Assassin's that's Creed. What, no, that's what uh, the PlayStation dinosaur game is about. Oh yeah, I forget what that one is. What's what's that? Uh, who cares? Uh, <laughs> Horizon Zero Dawn. There we go. Anyway, um, <laughs> but yeah. Spe speaking of <laughs> nailed it. It's rad. <laughs> speaking of of uh, Space Alien Times. Yes. Yeah. XCOM Two. XCOM right, right. Two. Uh, you have a, you've been playing it. You've been I have been it. playing it. Yes. Oh, so I, I got I got a, a build that is that is you know it's a preview build so it's still got some chunky bugs in there and, and load times are a little longer than old that, chunky like. bugs. And uh, but the, my nickname the, in high school. Yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> dramatic now. The dramatic part of this build is that it, it, it cuts me off a few months in. Okay. So you know it's, oh, it's, it's like, like a timed. Yeah. Build they don't want to give away okay. everything away. So sure. So uh, so I keep hitting that thing and they're actually like some aliens in there that i had that they're saying it's like oh you can totally see these i have not seen like the new aliens they're trying to show off because i i i'm i'm getting sidetracked by all the other like go through and do a speed yeah, run the only yeah pretty much you have to do it that to, to see it and this is a, a problem that no one but me will ever have sure yeah <laughs> um to, to see the, the things they wanted me to see in this build like i never i never saw them because uh because i i get sidetracked by all the stuff because there's so much stuff in this game one of the things they've done a really good job of is broadening the base of the tech tree Okay. Is in, in uh, and and basically making it feel uh, different every time you play through it because one of the problems because you kind of always started from the same place basically in XCOM. right in, in Enemy Unknown and Enemy Within uh, one of the big criticisms of it is that uh, like you can you can just develop a pattern of of this is how you play this is how you this is an optimized pattern of, to play through um, and this one kind of takes that away from you in a in a very civilization esque way by okay. you know kind of randomizing the terrain mm. of the strategy map so. This time, you know, you're you're taking Earth back from the aliens, uh, so you start in a random place on the on the map, um, and the the continent bonuses are all randomized. Uh, so you know, there's no there's no clear path to victory there. You have to read the map and figure out how to do it, like like you do in Civ. Um, and you know, it's much simpler than Civ, obviously. But aren't um, you on like a big giant plane flying you, around? You are. You are. You're but on you still Avenger, have. Yes. But you still have like a. There's a, no a bonus that's tied to like the place that you launch from, or right? Something? So okay. what what you're doing is you're making contact with the resistance cells in each area and, and networking them together with okay. communication towers and things like that. So you as you establish communication, you effectively control that territory, um, and the aliens are will attack periodically and, and try and take it back from you. So and and in this one, unlike uh, Enemy Unknown, you can actually retake things that have been taken back from you. So mm. uh, it's more of a push and pull. Um, meanwhile, the aliens are all, are trying to fill up a, a victory bar of their own by, by by building evil facilities and completing evil projects in them, um, and you can push that bar back down by taking out the, those facilities or doing other you know story based uh, uh, things that will that will you know move the the needle back in your favor and buy you more time. That seems yeah. That sounds like that would be addressing a specific aspect of Enemy Unknown, which was just like. 
you were always losing. It was just a question of how right. by how much. You yes. could never yeah. you could never turn that back if you lost. This some also of it. just right. it makes it sound like a much different game because Enemy Within uh, it was really cool. But I looked at it and like this is it's an expansion, right? Like it is Enemy Unknown with like some modifications, some right. really cool new stuff that is great. Well, it's building on it. Yeah. yeah. Whereas this is very much like no, like the premise is different. How well, you yeah. operate is different. The things you're doing are different. Like you are not XCOM. You're not building up this massive base and then defending from invasion and reacting it's like no you are trying to survive and like you're building up from nothing and i really like that yeah i mean fu- fundamentally it's it's very similar uh, sure yeah it's uh, all the all the tactical gameplay is similar you're going to click the, on some dudes and they're going to die yeah. and the the, the uh <laughs> the strategic layer is is completely new, yeah but it does share you know some some dna so uh, i i so something that so i really liked um xcom um i mean the uh, enemy unknown was the First one, enemy within is the expansion. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So anyway, I like both of them. I played I played the expansion as well as the base game. Um, I played enough that, you know, not to be too critical, but I felt like individual encounters lasted longer than I would have wanted. I think especially after I'd played a lot of them, I'm like, okay, this has an arc of like a pretty long lead up. You make contact. There's kind of like a war of attrition. It takes a while. Clear. You know, and like I did so many encounters that I I kind of wish that those had been each encounter had been focused in a little bit. Do you feel like encounters are um, are, are tighter or, or, or have less of a footprint this time? Or are they more big or the same? I don't know. I, I it, it varies. Okay. Like, there are a bunch of different mission types. Um, and the, the thing that kind of makes them, give them a little bit more energy is that there's always a secondary objective. Right. Um, so Which they added in Enemy Within with like the little things you could collect or having to diffuse bombs or something. Right. So yeah. uh, and the, the bomb defusal one is a, a good analog to to a lot of the things they do in this one. Like they'll have um, they'll have a an, an an alien terminal you have to reach and hack within a certain number of turns. So you'll, they'll have um, they'll have a uh, friendly. Uh, piece of equipment like a transmitter you have to reach before the aliens destroy it right um, when you hack the alien computer do you see the little skull from independence day if you <laughs> zoom in on the monitor and jeff goldblum goes ha, ha. <laughs> 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 if you say no i'm it's a no buy uh, well no, spoilers <laughs> okay all right. uh, i gotta leave some mystery <laughs> but the, the, the hacking mechanic is kind of cool in that <laughs> it's all it's all stat based and you know dice rolls just like everything sure. else but uh, you get to choose between. Uh, generally, you get to choose between two outcomes. Like if you succeed, uh, so like you'll get. Um, for, for example, you, there's one that will like a uh, 50% chance if you succeed, you permanently raise this this uh, this soldier's hacking skill by 20 points, or um, or even higher if you if you like 20%. You might take control of this uh, of all the robotic enemy units in the, in the on the map for a few turns. Okay. So it's and if you fail either of those, then enemy reinforcements get called down on you. Right. So there's a lot of risk reward. Sounds super intense. Yeah. Like a lot more can just go wrong. Right. Like it's not necessarily that you're failing more often, like you said, but just that there are more ways to do so. Yeah. The the uh, well, it also sounds like there's more ways to recover. Yeah. yeah. So which is good. I mean, yeah, push yeah. and pull. So, right? Soldiers do seem more versatile and powerful overall, and so do the aliens. Um, like they, they you know adopted the enemy within thing of giving every soldier two slots for equipment mm. uh, once you build a, an upgrade. Good. They, uh, they they do things like uh, reloading no longer ends your turn, so mm. you can reload <laughs> if you don't. You can okay. reload and then fire if you don't move. Oh, cool. Um, there are okay. a bunch of a bunch of things like that that, that give you uh, and you know upgrades that give you uh, more mobility, more uh, you know. Lethality, yeah, uh, just more versatility for your for your troops, which and I so really like. So XCOM two, they never they never like uh, changed the story on this or anything, right? It's like a piece straight up PC exclusive, right? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I I don't doubt that it, it will eventually. You think it's maybe a PC yeah. timed exclusive, and I, I, I can mean, see that because then if they're like we're going to develop the game in one form and then. In uh, get it on the console later. I could totally see didn't that. Didn't they do that with XCOM? Like it didn't come right away. No, did it? it. it was, no, it, it was day and day. It was day and day. Okay, dang. I thought but, it was later. But um, I, I guess I asked because Same I just day wondered. Is dishonored, actually. Yeah. 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 Great day. I, I had to, I had to make a decision that day. Yep. It was uh, dishonored. It was right? dishonored. Yeah. And then it was XCOM soon yeah. after. Um, but uh, yeah, I was just wondering if it felt like there was anything, like, PC specific about the experience. You know, that was sort of like that they could only do because it's a PC scoop. Period. So I, I mean, there's there's going to be Steam Workshop integration, which is going to be huge. So uh, is that 
So that, like, what, are, what can people do with that? Well, I mean, they're putting out all like full mod tools and everything. Oh, wow. One. So it's, it's going to be, okay. it's going to be a, a, I mean, they're, you know, Jake Solomon, the creative director is big on the idea of it being a platform for, for people to mess with. And sure. It, so they're, they're apparently blowing it wide open and giving people everything uh, to mess the, with. So. How much was there in the way of that for Enemy Unknown? And very Enemy little. Defense? Okay. It was, it was actually very difficult to mod. It, yeah. t- it took a long time for like the, the, the major mod is called the long war. Right. Makes I've it seen about super that, yeah. hard. Okay. Um, Those guys just started a studio, right? They did, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, because I'm, I'm not. I guess it's interesting because for Axis, obviously, like Civilization modding, and everything, yeah. yeah, it's like a mod-driven studio practically. Like all their games are like mods popularize their games in a lot yep. of ways, and I guess maybe it's, it sort of makes sense to me now that I think of it because. Um, XCOM was, I think, maybe the first game they'd ever shipped on Unreal. I, yeah, and I so I could see them being huh. like, okay, we're not using our own engine, we're not using the Civ engine or whatever, we're using Unreal, we just gotta ship a game on it, Yep. and our target for the sequel is we need to make it moddable, like, number one bullet point. Yep. That makes sense. Yep, they, and they, they do seem to have really put that emphasis on it. Because there, there was a lot of potential for, yeah. for mods in, oh, definitely. in uh, an Enemy Within, and it, it never never really realized all of it beyond Long War. And even that, like, you could tell there was a bunch of stuff they wanted to do and couldn't quite make work. Sure, yeah. But uh, this one, they, they are you know putting that front and center, so that's going to be huge. Um, I mean, there's there's stuff that I question whether a console could handle, uh, and load times I think would be sure. extraordinarily long on console. But I, nothing I, about I like the interface or whatever. The interface feels very similar. Okay. Because uh, I felt like the interface kind of on the first game on PC was a little squishy. It yeah. didn't really feel totally PC native to me. Yeah, going I back mean, to the beginning of our discussion, I guess. I, yeah. <laughs> I I was gonna bring that up too, actually, yeah. be, because it it does feel like like they are <clears throat> they are kind of designing it with an eventual console version in okay. mind. It's not. It doesn't feel like they went full on mouse and keyboard dedicated. Sure. Um, but you know, it, it's better. Like they've yeah. got they've got a bunch of things in there. Like uh, they've got a bunch more information on the screen. Like it'll break down. Like here's why your shot sucks. Um, sure. you know, okay. That's pretty say, cool. Yeah. It'll say it'll As say like, to just yeah. like haha. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's like you have a two percent chance uh, to hit this guy, and you have to go into a full other screen to see that. Uh, this one, it it, it uh, just has on the UI. You can expand it out, and it says oh, this guy's in full cover, and you're drunk. <laughs> um, so yeah, classic XCOM yeah. resistance soldiers. <laughs> can you actually? Can your you can't soldiers? Get, you can't get drunk. Okay. You, can, you can be disoriented. You can be oh, okay. uh, knocked unconscious. You poisoned, can be poisoned. You can yeah. be right, there's acid. Right, there's right. fire. There's like, there's a whole bunch more <laughs> status effects. It's like I, a real bad scene for one I, guy. Yeah, yeah, I really like. You have a twenty percent hit chance. You are on fire. Yeah. <laughs> is the reason. Yeah. And the character model's just like standing there, right? Well, I mean, there are there are limitations for when you're on fire. It's like you you can't do stuff because yeah. like, you are burning. I'm sure. Um, you probably don't want to reload your firearm right. if you're on fire at the time. <laughs> I, I expose had, these rounds real quick. <laughs> I had one poor bastard who who got uh, like wrapped up by a a, uh, a viper, which is I don't know if you've watched a if you snake saw. woman. Yeah, yeah, sexy sexy <laughs> snake lady. Um, snake they, boobs. Yeah. <laughs> they actually Bo- box back. Back they, of the box. They seem snake much boobs less confirmed. Snake boobs. Yeah. <laughs> they seem much less sexy in in action. But anyway, speak um, for yourself. <laughs> now I'm not yeah. in. But, they, <laughs> but so she she can you like, had me gone. She, she can like grab you with a like a frog tongue from across the map, suck you over to to her, and then bind you like in, in and you're not and making this crushing. not sound sexy. Right. You're <laughs> making it way worse. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I had I had one poor guy who got who got. It grabbed. always deals sixty nine damage. Yeah. Uh, he got he got grabbed, he got bound, and then like other guys started wailing on him until right. he was dead. Oh. Like that was. That Snake was, seems OP. Yeah, well, was, I mean, she she definitely can be. You gotta gotta watch out for them. It sounds a little bit like um, she sounds a little bit like the smoker from yeah. Life or Death. First thing I thought when yeah. I saw that video. No, but uh, getting yanked across the map. And in XCOM, if you're out of cover, you're basically screwed. Right. So like, if somebody gets bound, you've got to take out. You've got to like, if you hit her once while she's got someone bound, she gets you know she'll release mm-hmm. him. Yeah. So you've just got to hope you've you got to make sure that make somebody that right. Can yeah. you potentially hurt your guy? You can, yeah. Yes, uh, an, that's an explosive, so good. Seems like it's totally got good. to. Yeah. Uh, one of the things they did uh, with with. Uh, you know, kind of a stand-in for the uh, or an evolution of the concept of meld in Enemy Within, which mm-hmm. was the, the timed, you know, the expiring canisters of of goodies. Yeah, like the go. progression right. resource. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, Side quests, basically. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, just a- secondary tasks sure. on the map. Yeah. Uh, one thing Collectibles. They, one thing they've done here is they, they added loot. So when you kill, say you kill that that viper, uh, she might drop uh, like a there's like a nine tile area that oh. you have to get into, and you can you can pick up. Uh, some loot. You have to. There's a three-turn countdown for that. Okay. So, if you if the the first enemy in a pod that you kill happens to be the one that drops loot, 
then you've got a, a real incentive to kill everyone else real quick and yeah. get in there. Get or out. have somebody with a with like a lot of shielding just run in, yep. take the hits, and then get out or whatever. Yep. Yeah, that's interesting. And some of that loot can be can be pretty powerful. They've got uh, things like there's a there's an upgrade for a gun that will uh, even if you miss, you'll do damage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so it's, it's like what? it's like a kind of like a spray kind of thing, right? Okay. It's like, oh, well, I I missed with the the bulk of it, but I I kind of but the buckshot g- connected somewhere. Yep. Uh, the, the, there's you know just enhancements to critical hit chance or or uh, aim, but there's also uh, there's like an auto reload reloader, so you can say like, oh, the first two reloads of a mission uh, don't cost an action. Huh. Uh, nice. Th- so th- there's there's so stuff there's like one time use things like only during that mission if you use it it's gone forever. No, it, it like uh, as long as you have that gun. Okay. It's, it it's sounds like yeah, they're yeah. upgrades. They're upgrades to specific pieces of equipment, it's not specific to like guns, okay. Yes. Then can you see. transfer that gun between classes? Yes, and you stuff. can. Okay. Or between okay. between individuals. Units, yeah. 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 In that class. And huh. if if somebody dies um, and you are able to re- like say say you're on a mission, uh, you've got a guy with a badass gun. Uh, he gets killed. Gain her down. Yeah. <laughs> he gets killed. You have you uh, you then have to go and and grab him if you want to retreat. You have to go and grab him, uh, carry him on your shoulder. That corpse. Carry- I'm assuming that inhibits mobility and fire and accuracy. And- you can't fire, but okay. but you seem to be able to move out pretty much as far. Okay. Uh, but you have to carry him out on your shoulder, or you lose the gun. Huh. What about the guy? Oh, the guy's probably dead. Well, you can't just take the gun. Yeah, well, why can't you just if take he's the unconscious, gun? <laughs> if he's unconscious, you can right. you can save him. But yeah, he's he's. You gotta carry dead, a corpse dead. to take his gun. Yeah, yeah I think you should be able to take a gun. <laughs> questionable. What if yeah. I just throw my gun in the garbage and pick up Steve's? Yeah, it's it's still a little bit disappointing that there's no on battlefield inventory management like there I was, was in about the to ask. Like, I was wondering if you know, like, let's say, whatever the tactical situation was, you were like. My guy has the gun that would be really good for that guy to have right now. If you right. could, like throw it to yeah. him or oh whatever, but like yeah. some like really There's badass movie moments. Did, there. did you ever did you ever play the original XCOM? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that. I mean, that I played a that. whole lot. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm. It's a pretty intense. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. my, if my favorite game of all time. Oh yeah, no. But I mean, could you do that? I just, yeah. yes. I just oh didn't. Um, I didn't. I think I. I'm not a huge like tactical turn based guy, and I didn't get into it at the right time. Like by the time I tried it, it was like so. It took me a lot of tries to actually play maybe more than like an hour of System Shock One because System Shock One without like the mouse look mod or anything is like so just like play. it's hard to play it. games. It's hard just because they were making an FPS before FPS controls existed, yep. basically. Yeah, um, X- XCOM's UI is And XCOM is feels that way where you're just up. sort of like, Okay, I hope you're either 13 in 1993 and you yep. have a lot of time to bang your head against it <laughs> or you have like nowadays like a good wiki open on like I have the same experience yep. playing yeah. Syndicate for the first time oh and I and I played Syndicate for the first time when I was 13 and yep. I love that game but yep. if I tried to play it now it's I don't impossible. know if I'd feel the same no. way yeah even like Satellite Rain was kind of difficult to get into yeah uh, and you know, I played Syndicate back in the day too yeah um but anyway, you were you were saying sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I could I could talk all. You day can't throw I'm sweet. Saying. You can't have a sweet moment of throwing a shotgun to your bro. Oh, you, that's you cannot. You cannot that's disappointing. Do that. yeah. I, but I there's going to be mod tools. Right. I think the, the the first mod will be shotgun <laughs> yes, tossers. That's all I care about. Leaving one guy behind cover with nothing. Well, I mean, in in you know, it's a class based game, so you can't really transfer like sure. o- only only rangers or right. uh, can can use uh, can use uh, shotguns. That'll be Lame the second excuses. mod. But <laughs> Lame excuses, I say. But uh, yeah, I mean, like I, you, they could def- someone definitely will make a mod where anyone can equip anything. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, where was I going with that? Uh, oh yeah, ra- rangers are badass. I want I want to make an all ranger squad. Are they, they the got, guys with like the knives? They and got stuff? the swords. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah right. Um, oh okay. swords. Yeah. That, that's a shaber. Yeah. <laughs> those, those things are are vicious because snake shaber. <laughs> they're vicious because because of the the effective range. Like you know, your guy becomes a, a projectile basically. You can you oh, can that's really cool. you can move and then move again and attack. So a- attack at the end of the all move. the actions. Right. So it's it's. You can hit a guy a long way away with that. You know, but they just have no guns at all? No, they, they have a shotgun. Okay. But so the, okay, I want to make a, yeah. a, I, all I want a squad Rangers. full of them yeah. as well. So the, the danger is... <laughs> Sold. That, yeah, the danger is that once you're, once you're out there and you've, you've attacked with the, with the sword, you're, you're like you're way... You're not in cover. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, you can be in cover depending on where you are, but you're way up there away from the rest of your squad and you risk... Uh, activating another pod of aliens beyond. Yeah. Right. It's so, basically the it's the risk reward of in enemy within when you had like a, a cyborg like a mech suit mm-hmm. uh, soldier who either had uh, the puncher or the flamethrower or whatever. It's like they've got to get right up in there, do the attack, but then they're in the middle of everything. 
of course they're like a robot person so their spec is that they can take a bunch of damage but even then they but would they be vulnerable cover, yeah. yeah and so if if your if your ranger is just a normal guy and is in that situation it seems like you have to be really strategic about that yeah i mean it's it it takes some some uh you know finesse to get a, to get them to work right but but man they, they do some real damage if you upgrade them real good is the yeah is the sword very powerful i mean is it, the kind of thing where you get it in there they're at least like effective at taking the guy down that yeah they're, okay yeah and especially if you get the right upgrades um laser swords so th well they, they have the, and the only one i was able to get in this build was was one that you you t effectively effectively take from the enemy which is they, they have you know advent soldiers um snake shable one of them <laughs> one of them has uh ha it's called a stun lancer i hate those guys so much because they can do the same move so their their range is huge yeah. they'll, they'll charge in uh you know total disregard for their own safety but they they can get you from a long way away uh, and they can stun you. Okay. So that, like that they can take one of your guys out of the fight, do a lot of damage. If there are two or three of them, it's Oh, I hate those guys so much. <laughs> they, they have they have screwed me over so many times. Dan's having um, war flashbacks yeah. right yeah. now. Like uh, once you get armor and uh, and you know mag weapons, magnetic weaponry, uh, they're they're much less of a threat, but early game they are nasty as hell. Yeah. So uh, but so you can get a stun sword yeah, from so, them. Okay. Yeah. So you you uh, autopsy them and like they, they've uh, they've moved a lot of upgrades into the autopsies, which I, I think they did in in uh, Enemy Within as well. I think so. Yeah. Um, so there's a, a big incentive. That's what I was talking about with broadening the base of the research tree. There's so many things you get early on that it's no longer just a clear path of like get this, then this, and this, and you know then get everything. Right. Uh, it's it's much more. You have to you have to choose what you're going to do and you know determine what you're going how you're going to. Uh, progress. Yeah, which I'm excited about it. Yeah, it's I mean, I I haven't I haven't looked into it very closely. I've like watched the you know like pre-render trailers and stuff mm -hmm. and read about it a little bit, but I was sort of like, I'm gonna be checking this out. You know, I'll just see what happens. So this, this is the first time hearing about a lot of these details. They sound like really good you, you've, uh, you've design heard about decisions. The, you've heard about the procedurally generated maps, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm interested. In, I mean, do those seem to work well? Yeah. Are yeah. they the 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 danger? I always seem to encounter with those when it's not something that's like truly tile based like the original XCOM or like Spelunky or something is like how chunky the molecules are like does it actually feel like it's truly pr procedurally generated or does it just kind of seem like oh it's the one with those two buildings in that one building that I've played a <laughs> hundred times before so but in a different like arrangement a or something board. So yeah I mean like a lot of things that are procedurally generated yeah. that they aren't cool with having like a really low level fidelity for it ends up feeling that way you yeah know? I mean they, they ended up um, with a uh, system they describe as like a quilt, which is, hmm. uh, you know, they've got the roads are, are static, but, you know, what building goes where is, is different. And they've got a bunch of different buildings that can fit into each slot. Okay. Um, and a bunch of, you know, things strewn around, the, like cars and, and uh, you know, plants and stuff like okay. that everywhere that, that uh, you know, get rearranged. And I never, I haven't felt like I've played the same map twice. Okay, awesome. Um, I mean, it, it does, like, the tile sets, you know, it's like, oh, I, I'm in this tile set again. Um, but... You know, it, it's still it's like I, I don't feel like I, I there's any benefit to trying to m to memorize the layout. Right. Well, uh, and if it feels because I mean that sounds similar to how the original XCOM was. It's like they might drop a barn or a farmhouse in there. It's going to be that mm -hmm. barn or house or whatever. But it still felt like it was a truly procedurally generated layout of the whole yeah, battlefield. It's, it's pretty similar. Oh, cool. and another thing they did that I that I love is uh, the destruction is better. Okay. Um, like you can you can destroy floors and ceilings now. Nice. So, like, what, if you see a if you see an enemy like up on a on a rooftop, you get your grenadier, you fire a grenade up there. Yeah, takes out the the floor under them, and they fall through, oh, and it does extra damage. So good. I'm I really like, excited. Have, have, so this is. Do you guys know what I'm gonna gonna ask now? Did you guys ever play Silent Storm? Oh, and I never did. Oh. No, I missed okay. that. Okay. So I mean, it's on GOG and yeah. I think Steam and stuff. Um, I think it would be really interesting for you to just grab it and play a couple hours of it. Um. It's from like 2004. It's janky in a lot of ways. This looks like should I, should I do something. Silent, should I do uh, Silent Storm or Silent Storm Two? Uh, Silent, the original Silent Storm. Um, Mitch is currently looking at Silent yeah. Storm Gold Edition, which is oh. go for it. You know, like sure. whatever. Um, but it it has what you, like it was alternate World War Two, right? Right, yeah. and so it it really felt like a cross between XCOM and Jagged Alliance, mm -hmm. and so yeah, you're playing. In alternate World War II, you get to the point where there's like Walker mechs and stuff, but they're like cool, like gasoline powered, like lo fi Walker mechs, um, et cetera. But putting all that aside, it has that feature you're talking about where you're like, you got your guys, 
fog, you know, it's all about awareness, so you can't see anything that your guys aren't currently looking at. And there's like multi level houses and stuff. And so you're like creeping your guys into a house, and then you hear footsteps on the floor above you, and you just take out your heavy machine gun guy and just lay into the ceiling, and it just blows a hole oh, in does? the ceiling, it does and the guy falls train. through Excellent. and dies. Excellent. Yeah, and like I remember a really good um, moment when I was playing where like, I had a couple of guys outside of a, a house, like on the on a hedgerow or whatever, and I was getting shot at from an upper window by a sniper, and I didn't have a shot on him, but I had somebody fire a rocket launcher at it, and it didn't hit him, but it blew out the whole front of the of the house, and then my guy had a shot on him Perfect. and just took him out, oh and he God. like fell out of the hole into the street. There, there's a, a lot of that in XCOM. That's too. awesome. Like destroying cover. Yeah. Uh, the Grenadier, in fact, has has an ability that's devoted entirely to that. It's like it does no no damage to the enemy, but it'll destroy his but cover. Oh, nice. Really and like that's that's my primary use for grenades as well. Is yeah. just destroying the cover and then let somebody else kill him. I mean, it's awesome. it's so cool just to be able to say like, there's guys beneath us. One of us is going to take their turn to just blow a hole in the floor, and then the yeah. other guys are all going to shoot down into it. Like, and it's it's awesome that XCOM Two is going to have that as well. That's yeah. great. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard, but Silent Storm is rendered in breathtaking 3D, <laughs> <laughs> and turn-based gaming has never looked this good. <laughs> I mean, in 2004, that may have That's been true. true <laughs> yeah, 100. Yeah. percent Deve- Developer is yeah. Nivol. I've never heard of that. Yep. Yeah, Nivol like yeah. they do a lot yeah. of stuff that I've heard of. I just yeah. didn't know they did this. Now I'm just going to talk about Silent Storm more. So I really <laughs> so <laughs> so speaking of stuff like that, something that I loved is you get so at some point they developed the Walker Mech technology and it's like a heavy armor suit. Obviously the guys in it, he has like Gatling guns, etc. But because it's alternate history, there are also laser guns mm-hmm. in the game. So there are laser sniper rifles, but not just like a damage upgrade. <laughs> like I feel like the laser upgrades are in XCOM. It's mm-hmm. like they have different properties. So a laser rifle is super armor piercing. Um, it doesn't do damage to like tanks or mechs or whatever, but it penetrates them uh, really well. And so like if and if you so you can kill the driver of a Walker mech without destroying the mech. So like I just have oh, this really man. great memory of like the Walker mech walking up on us and my laser rifle guy just targets right in the center of it and you just see it go Pff! And then just stops. And then <laughs> me the, in the next turn, I send my guys up, and they have a whole animation for like opening the mech, throwing the dead guy out, nice. and getting into oh it. Oh my and like, god! And it's like, yes. This game sounds perfect. It's cool. It's cool. I mean, like I said, it's got usability issues sure. for being ten plus years old, uh-huh. um, but it did so many cool things at the time. Oh man. Anyway. Oh, uh, one one more thing that uh, I'm loving about XCOM 2, Another introduction of randomness is like some some of the loot you pick up, you get an Illyrium core. Right. Item, which by, cool. by itself does nothing, but uh, it lets you then take it to a facility you can build called the Proving Grounds, where uh, you can uh, spend some some you know engineering resources to uh, develop a random uh, ammo uh, type uh, huh. upgrade, or a random grenade, or a random heavy weapon for your exosuits. So, uh, like I got, I, I you know you kind of roll the dice and get a random thing back. So I got. Uh, one that that does that does like slightly more damage and also has a chance to set people on fire. I got an ammo piercing Good. ammunition. I got poison rounds. Uh, so just like you don't have any control over what you get back, so you just have to deal with you know play with what you're dealt. And I love that because yeah. it's like it's like I, well, I, I, it prevents me from falling into a pattern. I get to yeah. I look at at the pieces I'm given. routine. Yeah, I, I look at the pieces I'm given and and try to uh, try to you know figure out a solution to to you know familiar problems with new tools. And that 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 to me is a, a very interesting way to extend replayability, even though it's it takes control away from you. But I I kind of okay with that. Yeah, I mean, some people are gonna really wish they could just play it the exact way they want to, but I think there's something really powerful about having to improvise. And someone will mod it. Yeah, someone will mod it. <laughs> that's that's always been my favorite thing about stealth games is the improvisation and recovery aspect. Is yeah. Like something unpredictable happens and you adapt and you solve the problem that you didn't see coming and that is what makes stealth interesting to me. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I snuck through a room and nobody saw me. It's I got caught and I had to figure out how to get uncaught. Right, yeah. That kind of stuff is like what, what really makes video games strong is like making you feel smart for figuring out a situation that you didn't want to be in. Yeah, yep. definitely. So Mitch, we should move on to your your most anticipated before, uh, mine's before we're all dead. <laughs> I, mine's just a bunch of uh, a bunch of lame indie stuff, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that everyone will make fun of me for. Uh, Firewatch like is Tacoma. Firewatch <laughs> is top of the list. Tacoma, sigh. Uh, Oxen Free is really, really, really cool. I'm really excited for everyone to get to play that. Yeah, uh, I've just been seeing, it feels like a, a good amount of uh, that game just got like 
a good spike of visibility in the last few weeks kind of like i i kind of became aware of it recently i'm like oh that looks really cool that seems interesting i'm excited to play it yeah they released a trailer last year at gdc we're like yo this is awesome come by the office please yeah and come in they came by and hung out we talked about it and we've been following it ever since and it's out like, this month right yeah uh, it's out like in a week and a half or something yes and yeah. you should absolutely play auction free it's really cool uh, that's kind of the top of the list. I do, running down, like, I, I made a cheat sheet for everyone to look at so we knew what, what games to talk about. But uh, Perception, which is our IGN first this month, is really cool. So you play a game as a, a blind person using echolocation to navigate a spooky space. Daredevil. Really cool. You're Daredevil. Uh, Epic hero, hero shooter MOBA thing. Paragon seems interesting. I'm excited to learn more. The Witness is coming. Uh, Dan, I'm surprised you didn't say anything about Homeworld. Uh, well, I mean, Homeworld, Sands of Karak, or Desert, Desert, Desert of Karak, Karak yeah. Um, it's it's kind of a departure, so it's ground based. Uh, it's it's not. Mm. I, I you know I know so little about it. Like they haven't they haven't really shown. Yeah, much of what which it is. is a little worrisome because it's out real soon. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's out, out it's this out on month, the 20th. 20th. Yeah, so I'm 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 getting to see it next week. Okay, uh, but okay. I, d- I just don't know anything about it yet. Yeah. Uh, Hitman, Street Fighter Five, Mass Effect, Andromeda, obviously Far Cry Primal. We talked about a little bit. The I, am, I am interested in seeing what they do with Hitman. I it's mean, I, I've been a I've been a Hitman man, super fan, <laughs> off and man. on for a long time. A hit fan. Was it on at Blood Money and off every other time? Um, not every other time. Hitman mm-hmm. Two was really good. Yeah, I did. I I actually was not a big fan of Hitman Two. Honestly, really? I loved. The I first don't know how it holds up now. I loved it in high school. I loved the first game when it came out because it was such a unique <laughs> thing and it was. So inter- it had so yeah. many interesting features to it. I felt like there were just some balanced things about how they sure. approached Hitman 2 that I wasn't into. And then Contracts was fine. And then Blood Money was amazing. Yeah, I think 2 was the one where they had like the the like big Japanese castle. They had the snowy ninja yeah, yeah, that mission. One, that one Don't remember that at all. Well, the, the, then you... Exactly why. <laughs> so, but I, the, the problem was, was that with that one was they kind of lost what made that... That environment, those environments, so interesting is the related, related, ah, relatability. Really relatable. Right. Relatability is like it, it looks like a real place. Right. Whereas in, in that one, I was like, well, this is a crazy, ridiculous place. No one huh. would ever go to. Or well, exist. and they, I felt like the tuning just made it way easier to get caught and way harder to like get out of trouble when you got into trouble. I mean, yeah. as far as the improvisation sure. thing goes, that's what's wonderful about Blood Money is you can completely screw up, and just flail me i'm gonna run away and i'm gonna dress up like a handyman and run back and yeah nobody's just, exactly or like notice. kill six people leave them in a pile run yeah. away so nobody knows you did it and then be like <laughs> <laughs> and like there, there's something that matters about yeah. that that you can you know improvise and, and recover that's why it was a shame that the, ne- the whatever follow-up was absolution well, absolution mm-hmm. like i liked absolution but it was not a hitman game it was like it was an action game with some Right. Very cleverly scripted sequences to make you feel like you were having like a really daring escape. There yeah. were there were uh, there, there was there, there was, was a couple of missions areas. that were yeah. more, but I get the imp- my feet like the impression I get is that it seems like the team at IO is kind of at this point like okay 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 we Blood tried was the good one. Your, yeah. we tried it your way people who wanted us to make a regular yeah. action game. Now let us make a Hitman game. But Blood Money was really good, and maybe we should just make more of that. And yeah. if that's if that's that more or less what like. it ends up being, yeah. I'm going to be psyched. We started E3, and it looked like that. And I was like, perfect. Oh, this yeah. is the game I've wanted for like five, six like, years. I just want more Blood Money with better controls. Yep. Perfect. That's it. I hope that's what this is. <laughs> I hope so. If it is, I'm going to be over the moon. And yeah. I'm glad they're not doing the piecemeal release thing they were talking about doing, where it's like, oh, we'll put it out with like, like two things, uh, two, right. two yeah. sandboxes, and just then that you'll get the rest later. They, they delayed it, so yeah. it will actually get at least most of it up front. 